Hello and good evening to you all. Um, greetings from the south of France, where still the weather is all over the place. Um, anyway, I hope you can all hear and welcome and thank you to you all. And um, hopefully we won't have any trouble from any of the vile, horrible trolls. Um, I raise a glass to the magnet from a distance and all who are in the magnet in Broadstairs. So I shall drink out of my traveling cup this evening. Some nice rosé from the locality in a magnetic vessel. So I hope you're all settled in and battened down your hatches and are ready for whatever storm is coming wherever you are. I feel very sorry for the people in Derbyshire and other places where I believe in England there has been lots of flooding. Absolutely awful for those poor people and to hear that their homes have been inundated with water, that is shocking and terrible and I'm very, very saddened for them. Anyway, there we are. We are now going to move along to talk about various topics. Um, I don't know whether we'll manage to have a quiz or not this evening. It depends whether our quiz assistant can be here to help. But list of topics. But I have been starting to follow the Metropolitan Police, who I shall be visiting on my next visit to, to London next week. I shall be going there to make a formal complaint about something. But um, I have to go and make the formal complaint to the Metropolitan Police before I can go to the Police Complaints Commission. So I shall be visiting the Metropolitan Week when I am back in London. Um, it is something that I do not wish to have to do, but since the police officer in question has been utterly useless, as as much use as a chocolate teapot, there is no point in me continuing. But um, people have been sending me information about the Metropolitan Police's Twitter account. Now, we all have differing views on what is going on in um, Israel and Palestine and with Hamas, the evil terrorist organization. The BBC don't like the word terrorist. I shall call them terrorists because Hamas are terrorists. I feel sympathy for the Israeli people and the Palestinian people. But this metropolitan police have been becoming ridiculous with their twittering. You know, their twittering spam is becoming an absolute joke. Who is controlling their Twitter account? Is it this ridiculous Sadiq Khan? Um, there is something completely ridiculous about the way that Commander Kyle Gordon is allowing this Twitter account to be run. The Metropolitan Police should be busy finding criminals and catching them and bringing them to justice. It should not be going on in the way it is with stupid tweets, with stupid pictures and stupid nonsense that is absolutely appalling. The Metropolitan Police is a wasteful waste of space. You know, this is the same police force that is involved in the failed investigation into Ghislaine Maxwell in London in the 1990s and Jeffrey Epstein. This is the same Metropolitan Police that has wasted 15 million pounds nearly of public money on an investigation into a child who will never be found, Madeleine McCann. This is the wasteful Metropolitan Police who did nothing about the poor man who was murdered in a car park with an axe, Daniel, um, I forget his surname, um, the journalist, um, the investigative person. Uh, this is the same Metropolitan Police that messed up in the case of um, Stephen Lawrence. This 
Metropolitan Police is not fit for purpose. And now it is trying to make itself relevant by tweeting about the situation that is going on in the Middle East. I think it would be wise if the Metropolitan Police stopped tweeting about the Middle East and focused on dealing with crime in the capital. There is utterly no need for the Metropolitan Police to keep being the busybody. It is ridiculous. Shame on the Metropolitan Police. So I urge you not to follow the Metropolitan Police's Twitter account. It's your choice if you wish to, but I have been looking through their tweets and I have to say on the guidance of others, please, the Metropolitan Police should be a little more cautious in the way it communicates. Whoever is running its communications team is stupid, absolutely stupid. Shame on the Metropolitan Police. But I have my own problems with them regarding other matters and I will be making a formal complaint next week. So that is for me to do. That is nothing to do with this matter. It's a separate matter. Anyway, that is that. The next topic um, is this matter of this man called Dave Courtney. I've never met Dave Courtney. I think I'm probably very glad I didn't. But Mad Frankie Fraser, as he was nicknamed, branded him a grass. Now, Mr. Fraser was always very pleasant when I met him. I met him many, many years ago. And um, yes, of course, all these people have been tough and aggressive and bonkers and weird. But Mr. Fraser, to me, was very civilized. I think that this whole saga of this um, Dave Courtney character is beyond bizarre and ridiculous. I don't know the man. Um, I know lots of other people who have been talking about him, but I think that I would pay more attention to the views of Frankie Fraser than to this character, Dave Courtney, who seemed to rather like being a film star and, you know, going around with knuckle dusters on his hands and all the rest of it. Um, I don't know this Courtney character. Um, I'm sorry that he killed himself, or if that is the case, you know, some of these people are saying otherwise, I have no idea. Um, groups of well-wishers have turned up at his house in their Rolls Royces and all the rest of it. And, you know, other people who I've done programs with in the past are going on and on about this man like he's some kind of hero. Um, I don't particularly think he was. Um, I'm more of the belief that Frankie Fraser talked a lot of sense. And I have to say, having met other people from that world, including the Richardson family, who my friend Stephen Burkhoff was involved in playing, and I don't think those kind of people were in that kind of association. They behaved differently. You know, I don't think it, it's of relevance, but it seems that some friend of his called Brendan McGurr has been worried about him. Uh, da, 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 da. He didn't emerge from his bedroom and all the rest of it. But there we go. I think mad Frankie Fraser, as they all keep calling him, is someone I would have more time for in history. But there we go. So I shall leave that thought with you. Um, that is all I have to say on that particular topic. Now, the next particular topic is Lady Glen Connor. And Lady Glen Connor is someone whose books I've recommended to you in the past. I think Lady Glen Connor, who is 91, is a, an absolutely wonderful and wise lady. She is a lady who talks sense and she has experienced so much in her life. You know, she was one of Queen Elizabeth's 
um, maids of honor at her coronation in 1953. She has seen everything from, you know, the period of her youth and onwards with the royal family. But um, she has commented on Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, um, Meghan, the former Meghan Markle. And um, she's remarked to the male, um, she thinks that Meghan, Meghan, as I call her, thought she'd be riding around in a golden coach after her marriage to Prince Harry. She did not know what her duties were expected of her. I've said this repeatedly. Meghan Markle wanted rights without responsibilities. I think Lady Glen Connor sums it up perfectly. Um, Lady Glen Connor says she feels very sorry for Prince Harry. She claims this feeling is also felt in America. She remarked, I think she just thought it was sort of being like another actress, you know, riding around in a golden college coach and everything like that, and actually being a member of the royal family, a lot of it is extremely boring. Um, she said that she'd sat, sat next to John Kerry, the American politician, at King Charles's coronation. The socialite born Anne Tennant said she asked him, what do you think in America? What do you think in America about Harry and Meghan? She continued, he said, we all feel very, very sorry for Harry. I think I can just leave it at that. This is a situation that is yet again spiraling out of control. There are silly articles today in the Evening Standard talking about how Harry and Meghan are looking for a UK bolt hole. They want to come back. They even suggested they moved into a, a studio flat in Soho. But it was £500,000 and it was one room. How ridiculous. They've got two children. I know many people question whether these children exist, but there we are. That was one of the weird suggestions in this article. Another was that they lived in some place on the river so they could take a boat ride to go and see his brother, who isn't speaking to him, according to many reports. A totally stupid, ludicrous article. Nonsense and balderdash. Stupid beyond belief. But Lady Glen Connor speaks a lot of sense. Lady Glen Connor speaks for the nation. So there we are. Um, well, I don't know, there's a few of you here, but obviously I'm doing this early tonight, which I do apologize for, but um, the nights get darker here earlier, and I decided I wish to do this earlier today. So here we are. Um, so if any of you have any questions, please interject. You are very welcome to interject. But it doesn't seem we have any questions at this stage in the game. Um, there we are. So that was Lady Glen Connor. Now, another matter I've read about today in the Evening Standard was a woman who is called the McMafia banker's wife. <coughs> now, Zamira Haji. Ava, now I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation of such a name, but there we are. Um, it's someone I have encountered in the past when I was in Knightsbridge. Now, a friend of mine who is a lawyer has represented this woman, this shameful woman who has been involved in Azerbaijan and um, he works at a bank in Azerbaijan, and they have been caught out by the National Crime Agency. And um, she lived in Walton uh, Street, um, verging on Walton Place, I'm not sure one or the other, um, in Knightsbridge. And she spent £16 million in Harrods on all sorts of junk. The woman was a spenderholic. 
she also happened to own a golf course not mentioned in, by the evening standard in um sunny berkshire so there we go this woman um has been trying to keep her 49 piece jewelry collection but the court described it as luxury items not necessary to maintain a basic standard of living. Um, this woman is an absolute pest. She is, she is of the league of Tamara Eccleston in her ludicrous way of living. She is a bit like Lady Docker, commonly known as Lady Muck. Um, you know, vulgar and tacky and cheap. You know, she had a Boucheron sapphire and ruby serpent pendant danger necklace. It was bought for a VAT exempt price of eight hundred sixty-three thousand pounds and four hundred eight hundred sixty-three four seven eight. A Van Cleef and Apple Appel cultured pearl necklace with a diamond clasp, bought in two thousand and eight for three hundred and ten thousand four hundred and thirty-one. She had Tiffany. She had Cartier. She had this and she had that. This this disgrace um, is trying to keep a platinum solitaire diamond ring that was bought in July 2011 at Harrods for 992200 before being repurchased on the 2nd of November. So she bought it twice following a refund for a higher price of 1.1% a million pounds, nearly 1.2 million pounds. This woman is very odd. Many of the other jewels, the prices are unknown. Class, no. Brass, yes. She's got a brass neck and she's got no class. The Chopard wearing diamond pendant, the Leo Pizzo sapphire and diamond earrings and pendant. Uh, Sabadini sapphire and emerald diamond ring Cartier, all sorts of things. This piece of toe rag deserves to have everything taken off her. This shameful disgrace and her husband are appalling. There is a separate case concerning the property in Walton Street, Walton Place, whichever it is. They call the, the they say it's worth 15 million. I would say it's worth a hell of a lot more. It's two houses turned into one. Um, Justin says, all fur coats and no knickers, my mother used to say. Well, Mrs. Hajieva is definitely that. She denies any wrongdoing. Well, I think that this shameful piece of scumbag should be chucked out onto the Bibby Stockholm at the very best, I think she should be chucked out of Britain. In fact, instead, it would be better to get rid of her. If we want to deport people, start with this dreadful woman. She is somebody who has abused the system and she should be ashamed of herself. She is rotten and she is wrong. Why, as they say, items of jewellery um, which they own jointly, him and, uh, that's him, the man and his wife, are luxury items and not necessary for maintaining a basic standard of living. Take the lot of it off them. This pair of grubby grabbers deserve to forfeit everything. They are disgusting and senseless and insensitive and their ill-gotten gains should be taken off them. No, thank you very much. And I do happen to know a lawyer who represents represented them at one point. Whether he still represents them, I have no idea. I haven't asked. But I think this particular woman is pathetic. And she's trying to claim that she needs to keep this and it's not fair for her and she's a victim well she claims that 
she's given evidence that she is she had telephone contact with Mr. Hajev or Hajiev or whatever he's called until March 2021 when he decided to stop speaking to her. She communicates with his sons twice a week. The obvious route of communication would be through his wife, but Mr. Hajiev has apparently made a choice not to speak to her. Um, she is playing every little trump card she thinks she can. She is a bit like Bernard Eccleston, yes. Um, she is not suitable or fit for purpose. They try every trick in the book. And convicted criminal fraudster Bernie Eccleston has tried every trick in the book as well. So I'm not going to stop talking about people like this because there are ordinary people in the world who deserve your support and our support and my support. People like this, chuck the book at them. Shame on the lot of them. Disgraceful toe rags. Anyway, that is all I have to say on Mrs. Um, Zamira. My next topic is the fact that the British government have spent £118.8 million refurbishing the British um, Embassy in America, in Washington. Now, one hundred and eighteen point eight million pounds is a an awful lot of money to spend on one property. That is ridiculous. Um, yes, they've put in some very expensive artworks, including a Warhol. Um, they have put in all sorts of things. The original estimate was fifty five million pounds. But they blame storm leaks, mold, decayed pipes, asbestos, and many unexpected nasties, say Tatler magazine. Um, it was designed by Edwin Lotchens. It opened in 1930. And they've put in all sorts of things into it. Now, They've even included a painting by the rather crass creep, David Bailey of the late Queen Elizabeth. David Bailey is one of the most repugnant people I've ever met. He is rude, he's offensive, and he's disgusting, and I don't like him. I find him a complete creep. Um, he is crass and cruel and sick in the head. He may be talented as a photographer, but he's not a pleasant person. I don't like David Bailey, but they've chosen to include him. Now, uh, Grayson Perry has been included. All manner of others have been included. Now, I used to know a couple that resided in the British Embassy in Washington, a most awful couple called Sir Christopher and then at the time of Lady Mayor. Now, Sir Christopher Mayor is dead, brown bread. I will not miss him. He's a pompous, he was a pompous prick. He is an awful, dreadful, boring, arrogant man who John Prescott rightly called the Red Sock Fop. I don't have any time for him. And as for his Chanel clad, um, charity tin banger wife, who, you know, the old banger, uh, Catherine Mayer, who was formerly um, called Catherine Lale, she is even more in the pits. She's now a baroness, courtesy of her mate, Theresa May. Absolutely shocking that that woman got put in the House of Lords and gets on £340 a day. God knows what she contributes to the world. She's not a piece of tosh. Dreadful, horrible woman and a dreadful, horrible husband, but... She she used to get her own home decorated by Ralph Warren. She would she seemed to like to do anything when she could get a bit of a freebie, that one. Um, there we go. She's the queen of the freebie. And she she was her redecoration of this embassy was obviously so bad that they've had to spend a hundred and nineteen million pounds fixing it. Now she's gone. So what a disaster area Lady Mayor's renovations were. Um just yet more evidence of the stupidity of 
Lady Maya, uh, Baroness Maya, as she's now known. Um, I hope never ever to see her ever again in my life. I once ran into her at a restaurant in Knightsbridge and I, she gave me the look of death. I was proud. I do like to upset people like her. This is a woman and her husband who spent Christmas in my very home when I cooked them. Well, I, I had a chef and we cooked lunch for her amongst others when they had nowhere else to go on Christmas Day. Sad, pathetic couple that they were. So they took advantage of me and I will never forget how nasty and gruesome they were. I called them out as two of the tackiest people and they were introduced to me by another person of the same vein, a woman called Basha Briggs who I don't speak to equally anymore also. They they all belong in the same group. Terrible, terrible, S strange people. Anyway, I tend to stick to the company of sensible people now and fun people and decent people. And it's lovely to have you all here. And it's lovely to chat with you all. Um, I think we've covered all the topics and... Um, it does seem that our quiz mistress is not available. So I don't think we'll be able to continue with a quiz. So if you have any questions, please ask them now, because otherwise there isn't much more to say. But um, no, in life, as Paulie says, you don't need the hangers on. Um, Lily says she will tally for the quiz. If Lily is willing to do the quiz, then we can give the quiz a go. Um, but it is um, it is necessary to know whether Lily can actually do this because it's a little difficult. Right, so Lily is willing. I can't do it whilst I'm asking the questions, you see. And I don't have anybody sitting next to me because... The other person you keep asking about has gone to bed long ago. Um, it was wise to send her to bed. Um, we didn't need any snoring today. Right. Um, right. Let's see if I can find a page about... Um, right. I think we haven't done this one before. So, Lily, thank you for being willing and waiting. Thank you. Lily is going to be the um, Debbie McGee of the evening. Thank you, Lily. Which British daily newspaper features the Fred Bassett cartoon strip? Is question number one. It isn't the Express, it isn't the Sun, and Paulie gets it with Daily Mail. Paulie gets the point. Paulie is the winner of the first point. Question number two. In which year did the hovercraft cease cross-channel services? Which year? It was not 1988 or 89 or 1980. It wasn't 87 or 82. It wasn't 76 or 98. No, none of you seem to be guessing this. It wasn't 2005. No, it was not 1979 or 1992. No, 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 and no, it wasn't 73. It wasn't 75, it wasn't 88, it was not 2002. Bernadette gets the point. Bernadette wins with 2000. Bernadette is the winner. Question number three. In food, antipasto is the Italian term for which course of a meal? The winner is Simon Coates. Simon Coates gets the point with starter. Simon Coates wins a point. Question number four. Which British athlete won the gold medal 
in the women's heptathlon at the 2000 Sydney Olympic Games. It is not Tessa Sanderson or Mary Peters, no. It is not Kelly Holmes or Sharon Davis. It's not Lindford Christie because he's not a woman. It's no, it's not Scylla Black. Scylla Black, um, Scylla Black um, preferred to sit in a Bentley with um, her initials on the headrests. It's not Fatima Whitbread, whose name you've not spelt correctly. And it's certainly not Frank Bruno, because I don't believe he's a woman either. Um, there we are. And it's definitely not Mike Tyson, because he's definitely not a woman either. It's not Scylla Slack, whoever you think she is. Um, there we go. We're not doing very well on this question. The question again is, which British athlete won the gold medal in the women's heptathlon of the 2000 Sydney Olympic Games? It is not Paula Radcliffe. It's not Fergie. The winner is Lydia of Aragon with Denise Lewis. Lydia of Aragon gets the point. Lydia of Aragon. Thank you. You finally brought it. Rue passed. Well, thank you. Um, most of you didn't get anywhere near. Right. Question number five. Which two colors make up the Greek national flag? The winner is Pauli with blue and white. Pauli got there first. Pauli just picked Simon Coates to the post, so Pauli gets the point. Question six. Which Victorian author wrote the novel Vanity Fair, first published in 1847? Nicole, it was not you who wrote Vanity Fair, I can assure you of that. Um, Claudia gets the point with William Thackeray. Claudia gets the point. Question seven. Ossia is the name given to twigs from which genus of tree when it is used in basket making? It is not oak. Simon Coates gets the point with Willow. Simon Coates wins the point. Question eight. What do the letters FAO stand for when written on a fax? Nobody sends faxes anymore, which proves how old this book is. Um, you could use it in other settings also. FAO. Uh, Rachel Jones gets the point for attention of... Rachel Jones is the winner. Question number nine. In which 1970s television comedy series did Reg Varney star as bus driver Stan Butler? The winner is Sticky... No, no, the winner is... Sorry, not. It's, it is... The winner is... Paulie Gaultier with On the Buses. Paulie gets the point. Another point for Paulie. Paulie seems to be doing rather well. I don't know if our score checker is still here. Hopefully so. And is able to update anyone on the current state of play. But it seems Paulie is doing rather well, in my view. Question 10. The Cape of Good Hope is a headland on the coast of which country? The Cape of Good Hope. The winner again is Paulie with South Africa. Simon Coates didn't guess it correct because he said Africa. 
um, it has to be South Africa. We can't have the entire continent. Question 11. In science, which term is used to describe the lowest temperature that can theoretically be attained? The winner is Simon Coates with absolute zero. Simon Coates gets it with absolute zero. Question 12. Were Britain's first basic state a old age pensions established in the first or second decade of the 20th century? First or second? The winner is Tarara Broom de Hay with first. Tarara Boom de Hay gets the point. Right. Question 13. The unlucky one for some. In human biology, is appear a loss of hearing, sight, or taste? Ambly appear. I didn't know even how to pronounce it. I've never even heard of it myself, so I am the weakest link. No, it is not taste. It, Rachel Jones wins the point with sight. Rachel Jones gets it. Question 14. Moccasin shoes are part of the traditional costume of which people? I can accept Red Indian, though the correct answer is North American Indians, Native Americans. I can accept Red Indian, but it may be regarded, according to the book, as offensive. So the person who was the first to type it said actually Red Indian, and that is Simon Coates. But the um, people who are woke will not like that as an answer. But I accept it because the book says to accept it, even though some people may consider it offensive. The next question. What M is used to describe a cinema with a large number of screens? Um, and somebody I used to work for was involved in the creation of many of these across America. There we go. And he and a vodka brand called Sky. There we are. But the winner is Pennine Counties. Pennine Counties gets the point with multiplex. The person in question I talked of was a man called Maurice Canbar, a very strange character, very inspirational in many ways, but also completely deranged. Anyway, he left the earth last year, so he won't be causing any more trouble to anyone else ever again. Question 16. Which Canadian author wrote Anne of Green Gables? Nobody seems to be answering this one. So I shall say cheers to the magnet. The winner is Lily with Lucy Maud Montgomery. Um, Lily gets the point. The author was certainly not Yuri Geller. All right, question 17. In which decade was polythene discovered? We only need the decade. Mm. It was not the 1940s. Pennine Counties gets the point. Another point to Pennine Counties with the 1930s. Pennine Counties is getting involved, I think. So there we go. Um, the next question, number 18, which Rogers and Hammerstein musical is named after a a fairground attraction. Right. 
It was not Mikado. Um, Simon Coates spells, spells it incorrectly, but he gets the, the word carousel. So Simon Coates gets yet another point. The penultimate question is, which creatures would an apiculturist keep? An apiculturist. And we all need these creatures more than ever or ever before. And we must do everything we can to protect them. The winner again is Simon Coates with B. Simon Coates gets the point. Simon Coates is the point winner. Question number 20 in economics. For what do the letters ERM stand? ERM. And Simon Coates is a beekeeper, but um, that's not relevant to this question, but it is the one before. We love beekeepers, yes. But what is the answer for ERM? Pennine Counties wins with, uh, no, no, Pennine Counties does not win. Sorry, Pennine Counties has got it wrong. Uh, Bernadette wins with exchange rate. Exchange rate mechanism. There we go. So um, if we can have the scores on the doors, miss doors, whatever, we need to know who the winner is. Um, I think we'd likely know who the winner is, but I need to have a tally, please. Can we please have a tally? Simon wins with six. Simon Coates was the winner. The beekeeper is the winner. So thank you very much, Simon Coates. You are not the weakest link. You don't need to say goodbye. There we go, Simon Coates. So there we are. So we've covered all our topics for the evening. And um, I hope some of you have some remarks, questions, or something to ask me. But if not, we will depart. But thank you very much for all your enthusiasm. Um, I don't think um, there is much more to say. But um, Nicole would like to play me at Scrabble. Well, take you on. I'll take you on with pleasure. But um, even the wonderful Barbara Minto, who wrote the fantastic Minto Pyramid Principle. A lovely lady who I know very, very well. Um, first class of women at Harvard Business School. Even she is terrified of playing me at Scrabble. So, um, and we've played many, many times. So, um, you know, um, she was the first woman to work for McKinsey Consulting, and she's an absolute legend. And she's a brilliant lady, and um, she's great fun at Scrabble. And her and I play Scrabble an awful lot. Um, I have Scrabble boards in all of my homes. Wherever I go in the world, I will always have a Scrabble board. Um, so it's great fun to be able to play Scrabble. Um, if your internet doesn't work, play Scrabble. Um, and have a dictionary with you of your own, obviously, if the internet doesn't work, because people do tend to cheat. Um, the two letter words like XI are the best for getting lots of points when you're in a bit of a, a hole in the game. Um, do I have Scrabble app on my phone? No, I don't. Um, I do occasionally play Giles Brandreth's word game um, on Twitter, which is quite good. So I recommend following Giles Brandreth on Twitter, the wonderful Giles. Um, has a little word game you can play every morning. Um, and Susie Dent, follow Susie Dent for her weird and wacky words. She's a, another absolute treasure for that. I don't know Susie Dent, never met her, but I do think she adds a lot of wonder and fantastic things to the world. People like that, superb, delightful. So um, do I play Twister? No, I can't say I play Twister, but um, do I play Wordle? I did used to try that during the lockdowns, but I've kind of given up on that. Um, I'm more into doing Scrabble on a board. Um, I prefer a real board. Um, there we go. Um, 
What do I think of the parking notice millionaires? I'm not sure who the parking notice millionaires are, so I can't possibly answer your question, Ava. But um, maybe you could send me a link. Um, there we go. Um, Nikki likes Monopoly. I I enjoy a game of Monopoly also. Um, I don't have a set currently. Um, I'd probably do somewhere, but it's probably in some storage vault, so I'm not sure where that is. But um, I do like Monopoly. Yes, lovely. And I love watching horse racing too. You know, that's a favourite thing of mine to be doing. So there we go. So, um, yes. Um, Nicole wants to come and play Scrabble at the Magnet. Well, we'll have to take the Scrabble board up to the Magnet, I suppose. Um, I'm not sure if the Magnet has a Scrabble board, but... We again say cheers to the magnet and cheers to the lovely Nikki and Will and Samantha and um, George and Karen and Steve and to all the wonderful customers, including Mario and June and Peter and Maria and Max and Elaine and Kate and all the other lovely people that go there jenny and um all sorts of other people i miss out many names at my peril of course but um of course viv and john who are the stalwarts and the lovely dogs and the lovely other characters that go there i've probably missed out various people but i say cheers to them all greetings and I will be back in England um, in November. London first and then Broadstairs. So watch out. There will be things going on. So greetings to you all. Happiness galore. Hope you all have a most lovely evening. And um, thank you ever so much. Um, it was a great day for Frankie to Tory on Saturday. Um, I didn't place a bet, CJ, no, but um, well done to Frankie Dettori on a truly triumphant career. Frankie Dettori is a truly wonderful person. And thank you ever so much to Bernadette for giving £9.99. Um, that's very generous of you. I don't know why £9.99, but um, that's a very specific number. But um, sounds like I'm being sold in um, some kind of special retail store there we are um thank you bernadette and um cheers to nikki and lynn and busted and rachel and nicole and chris and melissa and lydia of aragon heidi crimmins and paulie thank you ever so much um night nicole don't let the jingle jangle jewelry bite um I don't know if that's a, 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 a message to jingle, jangle, jingle, jangle, um, Mr. Savile, but there we are. Bernadette claims it cannot be made at £10 for some reason, but thank you ever so much for the £9.99, Bernadette. Very generous of you. Um, I shall go off now and perhaps go and visit a local hostelry all by myself. Um, that might be what I wish to do before I go to bed. I've had a very long day dealing with stupid people from Orange Internet who don't seem capable of putting cables into houses for Wi-Fi. They are completely stupid, and this is their third of the visit, and they are useless my neighbor tells me it took two years to do it with her house so we have to deal with this menace orange i have found people who speak english at orange finally which is a blessing but the curse is far from removed so anyway that is very boring and i don't think you actually care about it um I would like to throw the book at them, but there we are. Anyway, I hope you have a delightful evening. Take care. 
good night, good gardening, and as Jill Dando would say, the great late Jill Dando, don't have nightmares. Take care and goodbye. Bye-bye.